I think it's Although closer. Justin does have the yeah. chip lead now, so he's probably going to be opening a lot wider, so that, that would argue in favor of shoving as well. It's been a volatile hour for Eric. He's lost 58% of his chips past hour. Eric's raise it up to 500,000. Eric with the min raise, Zach will fold, and Justin with a playable hand in the big blind, Queen 10 offs. Heads up to the flop we go, Justin, a very slight underdog. His hand is much more uh, playable post flop. The flop is seven of hearts, three of diamonds, six of diamonds. Justin has checked dark. Action is on Eric. What do you guys think about the dark check? Is this something you guys do? I mean, realistically, you're just dark checking there anyway, but I, I don't see any need to like actually announce it. Do you think it makes a difference to how Eric Ooh. might play the, or just how people in general might play as the button? When facing a it normal... shouldn't in that particular spot because you're you're supposed to start with a check there anyway. Like it doesn't really change anything. Yeah, but maybe do you against, think like, it you does know, super, mentally. Super I... Players and cash games or something. But Justin's gonna try bluffing here, but Eric actually has the straight. That's one nice thing about having a, a ragged hand like King Five in your button range. Is like this is a spot where the big one's supposed to have this board, but Eric actually has it. Yeah, I'm surprised to see Justin bluff at this pot. There are a lot of better hands he could choose with which to bluff. Um, he could have heart draw, diamond draw, straight draws. He's also passed up on a lot of those spots earlier. Well, the nine of diamonds hits the river, so we'll see if he chooses to continue to bluff here. He has a queen of diamonds in his hand. Yeah, he blocks, he blocks uh, Eric's diamond draws, which is pretty good for him. I don't think Eric's folding, though. It would no, take would a really, really big bet to get Eric off this hand. Justin is going to bluff, which I think is probably correct. 11, Eric snap calls. I think that's a good combo for him to bluff the river with once he bets the turn. Uh, I don't know if the turn bet is necessarily going to be good. Yeah, I, I dislike the turn bet quite a bit. However, as played, I, I like the river bet. <laughs> so Eric, uh, 28 big blinds again. That was a big hand for him. But his stack is swinging all over the place. So Justin Losing not happy. a bunch with the 10-9 and then winning a bunch there. Justin not happy about that hand, and Zach not happy about that hand either, who came into this table as the chip leader. Now with three players left, he w he's probably hoping that uh, Eric becomes shorter in chips as the pay jump between third and second place is about 113,000. Zach can open the button with a decent hand here. King five suited. Eric, queen three suited. We'll make the call. Both players pick Both up players a piece of this. Pair. Zach is going to make a small C bet here. And Eric with bottom pair is wow. going to make the fold. Wow, I was not expecting that. He lays it down. Maybe. Not expecting that one. I don't think he's supposed to fold there. No. Maybe he has some sort of live read on Zach. 
That's We've possible. seen him just step a little more cautiously a little bit that he's shorter stacked. So I think that, you know, we yeah, saw a lot fair. of those plays earlier when he had a, a bit more chips. So I think he's just trying to be a little more cautious. Hey, he uh, dodged a bullet there. He was behind, and we're seeing the stacks now. Eric with 26 big ones. Justin with 75. Zach in the middle now with 48. Yeah, I think there are some threes that he can consider folding there. Um, maybe a hand just, you know, just like 3-5 or something like that with no backdoor flush draw. However, with the backdoor straight draws with the queen in his hand, that's just too tight of a fold. Yeah, I agreed. You guys might hear us talking about backdoor draws a lot and think like, well, what does that matter? Well, when the hands are this marginal, things like backdoor draws are how you sort of determine the first category of hands that you want to be adding to your ranges because you just have to be playing a lot of these to hands. Especially so three if, you're, if you're passing up on, you know, even marginal equity like backdoor draws, you might be folding too much three-handed. When when did you start playing poker, Brian? Uh, 2003. Okay, so you were you a uh, card runner subscriber? Uh, not back in the day. No, I, I didn't do card runners. Oh, okay, I, I still remember uh, you know Cole South saying in every video a backdoor flush draw counts as one and a half out. So that was my. Yep. Don't yep. know if you ever listened to. I, any I did Cole have that South. rule of thumb. Both players with middle pair here, Eric, with a better one though. Four of spades. Eric picks up a straight draw now. Zach still has second pair. Eric's going to keep betting. Seven fifty. Sticking to again. a small yeah. size. Especially with those kind of marginal hands that need protection. Not a great spot. With this sort of Zach. hand, I, I think I like it. I mean, he wants to get value from 5x, 4x, and 3x, and he has like a straight draw plus his pair. So his hand's pretty robust. I think with this particular hand, the small sizing is actually quite good. It's going to keep Zach in with 12% equity, which is obviously a win for him. Yeah, I, I like the call here by Zach, though, on this board. There's a lot of... Uh, yeah, I think he has to for that size. The, seven, the seven, seven on the river is going to get wow. Eric straight off the deep. Eric running hot when it counts. Eric announces two million. So Eric. big river bet from Eric here. Very quickly deciding to bet one with bluff. two million. Yeah, I think Zach had to reach the river, but I don't think he can call with this hand. I need oh, that's a time chip. Okay. Yeah, I'd I'd be pretty surprised if Zach called this river. Yeah, he's only beating spades. He could beat Ace X as well. Yeah, I mean, if Eric is just like completely clicking buttons, maybe. He does make wow, the call. Wow, he does make the call and gets the bad news. And Eric takes down a massive pot here against Zach. And Zach, very sad about the turn of events here from when he was the big stack. So I think rough stretch for him. I think part of what was going through Zach's head there is, you know, how many sixes are in Eric's pre-flop raising range? There, small blind versus big blind. Eric has been limping quite a bit. Is he really raising hands like, you know, five six, six seven, uh, these type of hands, six eight, four six? And I think he concluded that he was not. I don't see why he couldn't show up with some sixes though. He's definitely been mixing it up, and not only that, he's just been in a lot of pots, so I think any, anything, nearly anything would be possible from uh, from Eric there. Well, nonetheless, it was a loose call by Zach, and now he's third place in chips. Still with over uh, nearly 40 big blinds, about 30, 33, 35 big blinds. 33, uh, 33 he's, yeah. He's, he's got a stack right, to work with. 30 big blinds. That's still plenty to work with here. Yeah, it, it's hard to keep uh, the big picture in mind sometimes, though. You know, when especially when you're the big stack and suddenly you're short, it can be very uh, hard to keep your focus. So we'll see how Zach handles the situation. Absolutely. 7-5 uh, suited in the small blind here. A veteran online, 
I, I think he's very familiar with these types of stack sizes. Well, staying true to form, he, he flats a small blind here with the 5-7 suited. Now with Justin with the A7, we've seen him bluff with hands like this out of the small blind when facing an open from the button. Do you think he might 3-bet squeeze here instead of calling? I mean, it's a pretty great That's spot. That's possible given his propensity for using A6 as a 3-bet. I think it's certainly possible, yeah. Not only that, but Zach is... Zach's stack size here is really good to squeeze because a lot of Zach's good hands he'd be re-raising pre-flop. He just calls, which I think is the standard play. Deuce 10 6, two hearts. Zach is so close to a straight draw on this board. Really feels like he should have one. But he doesn't. I gotta keep looking. Eric's gonna see that here with uh, not a whole lot. Backdoor spades, king high. And Zach now with a seven high flush draw. We'll see how he wants to play this. Yeah, if I'm Zach here, I'm, I'm looking to check raise. Yeah, I think so as well. It looks like he's just going to call. Just calls. The problem with calling on a board like this is it, it makes it difficult to represent value hands if you miss your flush. For example, if, if the turn comes, uh, the turn or river comes with an overcard, um, it becomes more difficult. Now, this, the six of clubs on the turn is interesting. Some people would choose to lead here. He checks instead. Yeah, I do think this turn is a lot better for Zach than for uh, Eric, but that's even more true out of the big blind than out of the small blind. Zach's Zach just gonna checks. get up on the river. Seven high. Wow, how can ja Zach check there? Uh, this is not one of the boards I was referring to where I said you might not be able to represent value on the river. In fact, the runout came, uh, you know, uh, very good for Zach's value range. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a mandatory bluff there. I think he's just like reeling a bit from losing so many big pots before that. I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah, very I mean, a good rule of thumb when you're bluffing there. is, if you reach the river with like the worst part of your range, it just has no prayer of showing down. That's usually one of the hands you want to have in your bluff you range. And you obviously, seven you high seven on that high board. A lot there. <laughs> not, not super often. And Eric had, had to think that he was not going to win that pot when he checked the river. No. Yeah, Eric gave up on the hand the second he got called on the flop, I think. So, it, you know, Zach probably could have taken it down with a pretty small bet on the river. So is this would Zach have played that hand the same way if he hadn't just lost a big pot? We saw him play a lot no. of similar it's hands earlier where he gave up on the river with some pretty, pretty weak holdings. So I, I'm not sure. He just has not shown a propensity for a lot of, you know, river bluffs, just in general. He's kind of just trying to hit his hand and get there. Well, he raises here to 650k, which is a larger size than these players have been going with. Eric defends a five deuce suited in the big blind. I think for that size, I would have just pitched the five deuce. Yeah, agreed. I, th I think that, um, yeah, you have, to, you have to be pretty sensitive to the raise sizing, and I think for that size, five deuce is too much. A lot of players don't change their range enough against bigger sizings. <laughs> Look Eric, at this. Eric. He's just not going to let Zach breathe here. Sensing that Zach is just kind of tilted, reaching for chips, considering a raise. Oh, man. 1.3 million. Back to Zach. I feel, I feel bad for what's happening to Zach right now. <laughs> Zach lets it go. Eric takes it down with the five high. Joe. Brian, you and I would be about a million chips poor for having a folded preflop instead of calling and check raise the ace queen ten. That's true. That's not that's not a board I would usually choose to check raise in that spot, but uh, Eric perhaps picking up on something there takes it down, and now we have Justin with the chip lead, seventy two big blinds. Eric in second with fifty two, and Zach is bringing up the rear with twenty five. Twenty five is still very workable though. Zach came into this final table with about all, uh, almost three times as many chips as he presently has. He is not a happy camper right now. And Eric, who we saw kind of, you know, visually giving off signs of getting frustrated, getting on tilt, it didn't translate into his play too much other than folding the ace four instead of defending his big blind right at the end of the, but right before going on break. Um, now all of a sudden has his confidence back. And uh, Justin has just kind of been solid the, the entire day. Yeah, I agreed. 
Conference Tournament started with 1,244 entrants. We are now down to three players. They're playing for a first prize of $637,000 in change, plus a $15,000 entry to the Tournament of Champions. This is a high-stakes three-handed match of poker we're playing here. We see Justin on the button with Ace-5 off. Presumably, we'll be playing that one. It makes it 600. I like I like the bigger sizing from him as the big stack here. It puts a little more pressure on both other players, and especially Zach in the big blind. He's gonna have a harder time calling that size. Justin's played a very patient final table so far. He has stepped out of line a few times, both on bluffs and on uh, big calls, but it's mostly worked out for him. He's he is now the chip well. leader. Yeah, certainly. Back in the small one with a nice hand, ace nine. We'll see how he decides to play it here. He's just going to limp in, perhaps going for a limp re raise. And oh, he's up against the tens of Justin Zach. Well, that's going to spell trouble, trouble if that's back. what he's planning on. Yeah, for 23 big blinds, this seems like a pretty standard limp shove, and uh, it's going to get him in a lot of trouble here. Especially with the way things have been going for Zach, it's got to be very tempting for him to, uh, you know, just be able to shove over a raise with a hand like this and kind of get the momentum back on his side. But Justin has a very big hand here. Justin's going to make it 750. Zach does There's go all in. Battle. Justin calls. Zach will get the bad news, and he's going to need some help if he wants to stay alive here. He says it himself. Going to have to get lucky. He has 28% equity. Zach's fiance with the pink hat there. Jack no help for Zach four. on the flop. Justin with a better spade. He does have a backdoor straight draw, but he would need a 10, which is one of the tougher cards to hit. Well, Card that is a seven. So I know he'll need an ace or a 10 to stay alive. Five outs for Zach. And it's the a jack. The river card is a jack, and Zach has been eliminated as Justin continues to add to his stack here at the final table. Zach came in with the chip lead. He played played very, very well, but then he just got in the past, man, 10 or 15 minutes. It just came tumbling. tumbling things just down. fell apart, and he's going to go home in third place with $321,533 for his efforts. He goes over consolation uh, from his friends and family. He had the biggest rail of anybody at this final table and he played well the entire day i played with him uh, yesterday and now we're down to two two players left one of them uh trying to win his second wpt and justin zaki with the chip lead right now trying to win his first wpt the 33 year old poker pro from tampa florida and it looks like uh, we're discussing these players going on break. We are going to be taking a 15-minute break, and we'll be back for more action for the conclusion of this tournament and the heads-up match here at the Borgata Hotel, Casino, and Spa. See you soon. Back, everybody, for the heads-up match. Two players remain here in the Borgata World Poker Tour event. Duking it out for over 600000 U.S. dollars. Welcome back, everyone. So we get set up for our heads up play. Eric, Afriot, Afriot? Are, are we saying Afriot? Afriot. Afriot. Eric Afriot and Justin Zaki. Playing for the grand prize now. This is a pay jump of uh, $203,000 plus a tournament of champions seat. 
Now, I believe that Eric can already play in the Tournament of Champions. Is that correct? Yes, Eric already does have a WPT Championship title. So he's allowed to play. However, he, he would have to pony he would up have the 15,000. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Justin presently cannot buy or cannot even buy into the tournament. Uh, he's looking to win this one, get his entry into the Tournament of Champions, as well as that 637K. That, that might be nice, too. All right. I'm, I'm interested to see how these players play heads up. Justin has the chip lead, but Eric has shown the aggression this entire final table, and aggression tends to work out pretty well heads up, especially if your opponent's not making hands. It can be very frustrating to play against an aggressive player when you just keep missing the board. So let's see if Eric can make that work for him here. I'm guessing that we're going to see a pretty straightforward grind type of uh, game from, from Justin. And we're going to see some interesting plays from Eric if it's anything like it's been so far at this final table. I don't think this is going to be a incredibly long heads up just based on the, the style of play that Eric is going to push. If Justin can make some hands early, I think that that this could possibly be over quickly. Um, but if he does not, then I think Eric might have an edge and might lengthen this out and have a, really put himself in a good place to uh, just take this thing home. So there aren't too many hands that I would be limp. Uh, that I'm sorry, that I would be folding out of the on the button heads up, but four deuce offsuit I think would be one of them. Yeah, you can fold like the bottom 10% or so maybe, and then play the rest of the hands. It's, it's very uh, one of the biggest mistakes you can make heads up is folding too much, but four deuce offsuit definitely can be folded. So you think uh, Eric might be a, a favorite in this heads-up match? Well, I mean, he's down 2-1 to one in chip, so I, I don't know if he's a favorite right now, but I, I think that if Justin starts the heads-up match off slowly and doesn't make some good hands, mm. that Eric will quickly gain ground. And if that happens, then it's almost certainly anyone's game. Um, with Justin possibly back on his heels, I, I think that's when you could see Eric kind of having the edge. But I'll tell you, if, if Justin just holds on to that ace-jack suit at every hand, he's going to be in good shape. Justin's made some uh, really good call downs, though, so I, I wouldn't uh, assume that he's going to get run over necessarily. No, I don't think match. he's going to get run over. But you know, one of the, you know, one of the the aspects of making those call downs is, is having a hand that can call down. You know, I mean, he had the queen high, which was obviously a very tough call and a very good call by Justin. Um, but heads up, you know, you, you just keep making, you keep missing straight draws, and you keep making bad hands, and it, it can be very frustrating. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll give you two to one. I'll take Justin. We'll, we'll do a friendly bet. I'm not going to take that way. <laughs> <laughs> Is it just because he picked up pocket eights? Uh, oh, I'll tell you what, though, Kane. I'm liking my, my time bet still. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, both players with fantastic hands here. Suited ace for Eric and eights for Justin. He is going to three bet. Justin will put a three-raid up. One million seven fifty is the raise. I imagine that Eric will be flatting here. Wow! Wow! He lets it go. He lets go the ace five suited. That is suited. a very tight fold for heads up. I'll tell you what. Maybe he's thinking. You know what? Justin has been playing pretty solid at this final table. He's basically three bet bluff twice. And both times he did, he had a hand that dominates mine. He did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See the blinds moving up once again. 150,000, 300,000. Big blind with a 50,000 ante. Stack's getting a little shorter. Putting that pressure on Eric. Man, ace five of hearts looks like aces to me. It's not yeah, a hand. I I, I'm really folding hand. heads up too much. Man, Justin with another spectacular hand. Now, Eric, uh, I would uh, should be three betting here with the king jack suited. Let's see what he does. He does just call. It looks like only 40 big blinds deep. I don't mind calling as much. Uh, if he was much deeper than this, then then it's certainly a hand that I prefer to three bet. It's kind of in the middle of the range, middle territory here between too deep or sorry, not deep enough to three bet, and you know, kind of getting deeper where you want to three bet. So. Yeah, I just think that hand is too strong heads up. It's a very strong hand for sure. Against somebody who's opening a lot of buttons. Eric has a lock on the hand now with Trip Kings. 
another one of these small bets from Eric, which we've seen quite a bit. It'd be uh, pretty hard to fold ace jack high here, I think. Justin will make the call, and we will go to a river. Our river is the nine of hearts. Action on Eric. Justin in a tough spot now. He has a pretty decent bluff catcher here. I mean, Eric could have a lot of different busted draws on this run out. I'll tell you, if you bet super small again, I probably would uh, I would, I would fold. But to that sizing, I'm more likely to call. Yeah, I agreed. Eric wins a big one there. Did, uh, did Justin call? Yeah, he called uh, instantly. Yeah, he like snap called. Well, I mean, in that spot, Eric's value range is just King X and his bluffs are like a bunch of straight draws and the backdoor flush draw they missed, right? So I, I think the call is pretty reasonable. I mean, I, I don't see why he can't bet a, a five there, like any five. Or, I mean, he, he certainly could. Yeah, he you could. Just don't I, think I don't he know will. for that size, though, yeah. maybe. I mean, I, I don't I don't see why not. I, I, I certainly would. It seems like one of the... I think I think the way Eric's been playing, like though, he would bet a five hand. like a lot smaller. Yeah, that's like definitely possible. Problem. Yeah. The yeah. sizing he chose is more polarized. Yeah, I, I like that call by Justin there. Eric once again outflops Justin. Eric is going to bet with his middle pair here. Still with that small, small, small sizing. Yep, I think I think that hand's gonna be a pretty easy fold though for Justin. He doesn't even have a diamond. So Eric taking it down. Stack's a lot closer now. I bet you wish you'd book that bet at a two to one. <laughs> Still so gonna give me two to one? No. <laughs> one point five. Just gonna always give me that, even that <laughs> price, huh? Eric with queens now, and Justin with a playable hand. A lot of strong hands so far in this heads-up match. Oh, yeah, certainly. Eric will re-raise out of the big blind to 1.5 million. 1.5, yeah, for Eric here. only 2.5x. However, with Jack-9 offsuit, I don't imagine that Justin will be peeling. Agreed. So far, what we've noticed, uh, what I've noticed from Eric is that he tends to act pretty quickly when he's strong. Um, he did that on the river with his straight against uh, Zach as well. But Justin does make the call. Yeah, I mean, Jack Nine Officer is a pretty good hand here, heads up, just in general. And he did not make it incredibly large here. I I'm a little concerned that Eric is just going to have a lot of strong hands here. Right. But I think in theory it's a call yeah. with antis and uh, facing a 2.5x raise. Yeah, he is in bad shape here, though. The bet's 900k, but Justin has to be thinking this is not a very good board for Eric's range. He does just fold, though. Yeah, even so, I would think Jack-9 is, like, one of the worst hands he could have there. Yeah. It is something, you know, sitting here watching these players every hand, the camera on them. And we're just sitting here watching how much I feel like I can pick up. Whereas when I'm sitting at the table, I pick up next to nothing on, on people most of the time. Yeah, agreed. I, I found that too when I do commentary. I, I pick up all these, uh, you know, tells and timing tells and everything. And then when I actually play, it's much, much harder. So. Well, I'm sure if you saw your opponent's whole cards every hand, the problem is that when you're playing live poker, you see so few showdowns. Exactly. That you don't know what they had. Yep. Even when uh, Justin had the 10s, he kind of perked up in his seat the second he looked at them, 
sat up and started looking around and it just you know when you see hey he's got two tents here it really exudes strength uh, whereas playing live i would i would assume nothing because you don't even get to see that hand 95 percent of the time yeah justin so far like i commented earlier has been acting pretty uh genuinely in in his in his actions when he's deliberating whether or not it's to call in a close spot he, he kind of is going back and forth and playing with his chips and uh, then, like you said, when he picked up the tens, he kind of kind of perked up. So Eric with the five-two suited here, and a raise. We know he likes eight hundred thousand. A big raise from Eric. He bluffed Zach with Just a hand. call though with the seven-six offseat. That's not there. Justin with a nice hand here got shot in over cards to the four. If I were Justin, I'd be looking to raise here. Yeah, I think it's a great spot to check raise. Looks like he is indeed going to check raise. Justin raises it. Looks like two low one fifty thousand. Pretty small raise here. Eric Looks like Eric is uh, going to do something. Maybe. He is not giving up immediately. He does not have uh, like the worst continuing hands in the world. Does have backdoor, two backdoor straight draws and, and backdoor flush draws, but I, I would I would much prefer to have some higher cards to do something with here. Yeah, having an undercard of the four is pretty deadly. Yeah. Nice hand from Justin. But Justin takes that one down. Nice hand for him. We did notice Eric raising uh, oddly large on that hand. I don't think he's gone to that size yet before that hand. Just on the button now, the very weak hand, we might see him fold this one. A couple of ragged nines for both of these players. You don't want to fold much on your button, but the very worst hands can be folded, and that is certainly one of the very worst hands. Both players still with their time chips. I think Eric has does Eric have six of them? Five or six, it looks like. From his initial eight. Yeah, it seems like eight is a lot at the final table. I, not too many were used. I think that just overall the, the the time chips are not as important at the final table because everyone's always paying attention. There's only one table in action. You're watching every hand. You know, you, you kind of have an idea of what's going on. It's all people that have been playing for such a long time in the tournament as well. You know your opponents a lot better since you've been playing them for a couple of days now. Uh, so I think that there, there's just fewer actually really tough situations, even though all the money is on the line. As weird as that may be, you know, we saw we saw Mike uh, Michael Martyr have a couple of really tough spots and utilize a couple of his chips, and even then, it only took him you know one or two chips to to make those decisions. Um, so so that's why I don't think they actually come into play as much at the final table as some people think. How much do you think that the uh, time element of this final table has sped up the the pace of play? I don't think it's really sped up the final table much at all. Uh, I think you get the biggest benefit near the bubble and through the stages leading up to the final table because that's when people are most concerned about the speed of play at other tables. Uh, for example, on the bubble, when everyone's worried, oh, is there a short stack that might bust? I don't want to bust before he does. And people are playing slower and stalling and stuff like that. So 
that is the biggest advantage. Uh, I also think that just down the stretch when you play, you know, two tables, three tables, four tables left, you tend to see a lot of excessive tanking in spots where the pots can get big. For example, like facing three bets or, you know, in a three bet pot or a four bet pot on the flop, that guy's deciding how much to see bet and if he should see bet. And people tend to take excessive time there. I think those pots are sped up by a, a fair bit, which is a good thing. I think those pots tend to take way too long in spots where people are, you know, going to see bet like close to 100%. Like, what are you waiting for? Just bet. You, we know you're going to bet. Everyone knows you're going to bet. Um, so I think that that's really a big help. Um, but like I said, you know, with these final table situations, I don't think it's a giant difference. So what do you think about uh, if this was not not a timed final table? Do you think it's possible that Mike could have taken more time with the king three of clubs against uh, Zach's straight flush? Well, he could have taken more time. He had six additional time chips that he, he could have used at least a couple of. Right, but, um, but did he want to conserve those for future spots? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think that it... I mean, I don't think it should have played a role. You know, if you're facing a if you're call, wrong in that hand, there are no future. Yeah, spots. exactly. If you're facing a call for your tournament life, you got to get through that hand first uh, before you worry too much about future spots. So, um, yeah, maybe you know, maybe he doesn't want to use every one of his chips, but uh, maybe he can use. I mean, like I said, I think he had six left. You know, if you want to say, 